I, there were things that you know, and we'll get into that in our our, our maxi pod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from CinemaSins, joined as always by the voice of CinemaSins, Jeremy Scott. Kapow! And for music video, Sins Barrett Share. Zing! And we're joined today by a guest. From also our family of channels, yes, yeah. Jonathan Watkins. Yay! He's I, here for I the. I like, cannot compete with Kapow and Z. So no. Yeah. Say hello. Probably the fifth or sixth time somewhere around. Uh, that there. sounds about right. First time that we've been in here together. Yeah, this is first yeah. time Jeremy and I have been here together. That'll be fun. So. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, totally. Cool. We are not the same person as most. Yeah. You know, yeah. As no was, one's ever. Assumed. I was telling him when I came in, I I pulled up and saw a second car in the driveway. I was like, "Who is this motherfucker that's yeah. taking my spot?" I know. And then I remembered it was Jonathan. What a dick. I am a dick. Um, but uh, today we're going to be doing a mini pod. Mini pod. Mini pod. Yes. In, in finny pod. Oh, in you know what's pod. hard though? It's really, I'm really frustrated because now the like the core hardcore fans of the podcast can now predict any whatever pod <laughs> I could come up with because mm-hmm. I saw like I, I saw the first few I saw was like a Venji pod uh-huh. and Infinity pod and I was like I'm just going to do Infinity pod because yeah. mm-hmm. it rhymes with mini pod. Mm-hmm. But then I started seeing that too and I was uh. like I can't. I can't be original anymore. It's like, I've right. taught them too well. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You could um, do a Worry Pod. A oh, Worry Pod. That'd be a different one. Avengers Infinity Worry Pod. <laughs> yeah. Know. We're going to be doing a mini pod of Avengers Infinity War. The yeah. movie made $257 million over the weekend. Two people saw it. Just yeah. one or yeah. two. Yeah. Just yeah. one or two dollars. Break, breaking the Force Awakens record. Did uh, you expect opening that? Weekend. Yes, I was. Mm. It it broke pretty much all the opening weekend records, right? Yeah, it broke the worldwide, which I think was like five hundred thirty million or something like that, is what it made. Maybe more. I think more. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's made a ton of money, and it's got a free reign all the way until Deadpool, and yeah. and uh, who knows? I mean, you know, it it's I think it's getting good enough uh, recognition, reviews, and all that that uh, if it drops only if it drops only fifty percent. You're getting 125 million next weekend, and it's also doing well during the week too. And it was like earlier. I know when we did our summer preview and everything, I was like, I don't know if it can beat Black Panther. I still don't because Black Panther's at 688 right now. You mean total gross? Yeah, total gross mm-hmm. domestic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it can beat Black Panther, but the like, obviously can. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the my my thing is when Deadpool comes out and when Solo comes out, will it be able to? keep up at that point because i think it'll easily be around 500 million by the time deadpool mm-hmm. comes out and then it's probably got a free ride to hit 700 at least one so. of the things i yeah. think helped black panther do so well uh, i could put any movie in that sentence was repeat viewing mm-hmm. um and i'm seeing a lot at least uh, what my narrow world view of social media is on you know my computer i'm seeing a lot of people who are seeing it over and over like i saw one of our fans on Twitter I interact with a lot was like, I'm seeing it for the third time on Monday. And I'm like, holy shit, how do you have time to do anything else? Infinity War? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So I think and this, what a strange situation this is, right? There's never been a movie like this. Well, and ever. I think Black Panther was fifth last week. Like, yeah. I mean, still yeah, still in there, yeah. yeah, I yeah. mean, it was crazy. I think if anywhere got people back into going to see it again. Yeah. <laughs> this is a 10 year culmination, what, 19, 20 some movies, mm-hmm. all building to this Mm -hmm. and i suppose avengers 4 and we've never seen no one's ever done this let's build a connected universe of multiple series that are all in the same world and we're going to crescendo where they're all in an adventure together Mm -hmm. if you sat down and watched this movie without having seen any mcu films you would be lost as fuck i wonder i think that's okay yeah i wonder what percentage of the audience did that it has to be very very small it does younger i think well i think less than a percent i think maybe younger people that had not you know like that were too young to see the other ones yeah. and they're going with their parents to see this one um this might be only their second or third but they've still probably at least seen black panther mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. maybe the last couple of avengers films so mm-hmm. yeah that'd be i think you'd still enjoy it though i think you'd still have fun watching it but yeah you're definitely going to be oh yeah from the get-go you're gonna be lost yeah. oh yeah it does the movie's not gonna waste any time on i mean it wastes time for well, sure it's, <laughs> but it's not gonna waste time in the opening <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, we're staying spoiler free, right? We're staying spoiler free for a bit and then we'll get into the spoilers afterwards. But, uh, I guess just go, let's get into it. 
What did you think of Avengers Infinity War? I'm interested to hear Jeremy's opinion because I saw your tweet yeah. yesterday and it was something paraphrasing like, I liked it. I liked it probably more than some people and I liked it less than some people. I think I'm kind of in your camp too. Yeah. I, I loved it. I thought it was fun. I thought it, they gave the characters decent room to breathe. Mm-hmm. I wasn't as infatuated with it as I, I thought was the potential. And from what I've heard, people like gush over it. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm old. Mm. I'm actually yeah, had a mild crisis of conscience after this movie. In like, I may just be out of touch. Mm. Like, I liked it a lot. Mm. I liked it probably a little more than I liked Civil War. But I didn't like Civil War as much as everybody else did. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it does some things better that Civil War than Civil War. Oh, yeah. I think it gives us, I mean, the the villain is fantastic because they've spent, you know, 10 years with all of the heroes. They can afford to let this movie take its time giving you the backstory of the villain slash protagonist. Uh, but, you know, I didn't I didn't cry. I didn't fall in love with it. I'm seeing people like having Jesus experiences yeah. at this movie. And I'm wondering if I was talking with Simser about this last night online because he and I had a similar reaction. It's just it feels like we're now in this era of filmmaking by beats. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the beats work great in this movie, but there are a lot of moments where it feels like I'm supposed to be cheering just because person A and person B have finally met each other. Mm-hmm. And if there's not a compelling movie thing going on, I'm not going to cheer just because these two people are meeting, but everybody else is. Mm-hmm. And I'm starting to realize maybe I'm the guy on the island here. Maybe when back when I'm in love with Star Wars and my dad's like, I don't get it. Like, maybe I've turned into him. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone, though. You're, the three of uh, Chris and Barrett and I saw it together, and there were a lot of people clapping at certain moments. Mm-hmm. And People just and, show up on screen yeah, and they're clapping. And, yep. we're, and we're all enjoying it. Like, I mean, the three of us are highly enjoying it, but we weren't standing up clapping when, I mean, like the Captain America entrance. I don't think that's a spoiler. No. Captain America showing up. That's a great bit. Although there's one person out here there is like, Captain America's in this movie? Yeah. Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> but that's a great bit. But like the audience just erupted. I mean, they were just clapping and mm-hmm. it was just, a, it was a thing. And that was a really cool moment. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I think a lot of the credit goes to the Russo brothers. Uh, the fact that this movie works at all, I think, is enough to say it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's actually even better than that. I don't know if that makes sense, but it and it, then it actually, it, you know, it moved me at times. But I did think that was weird. I heard a lot of stuff going into it, like bring your bring your tissues. Yeah. And uh, I not once was I like no oh I cannot wait to yeah get I can't wait to get into the spoilers yeah either. I mean a lot of that's going to come in the spoilers section but um um I thought one thing I did like about this now when we get into spoilers we can talk about whether this is really the case at the end of it but I I this was the first time since I would say Winter Soldier that I felt like there were stakes hmm. that I felt like they were. You know, Winter Soldier was one of those movies where it seemed like they were changing shit up, mm-hmm. like they were, you know, breaking the norm. And you could argue whether they did or not after that. I think they did a little bit, and I think in some cases they didn't. But that's how I felt while watching this movie. Every scene, there was tension because mm. you didn't know how that scene was going to end. I both agree and disagree. Well, now, like I said, once it ended, you could go back and be like, well, that was fault. But I'm saying while I'm watching it. Sure. No, there's definitely more weight. Um, yeah, especially after that opening scene, which we'll get, which was great. Yeah, and again, you yeah. know, I, I... I understand Thanos's motivation and can sympathize with it much more than I can understand either side in Civil War. Yeah, that's oh, true. yeah, for sure. <laughs> so in that regard, I totally agree with yeah. you. The, the movie does have moments of, of true weight yeah. that, for me, have been missing from previous MCU films for in large part. Uh, one thing that I think for sure I want to praise is that they have 100% figured out humor for these films. Yeah. Like, starting with the first Guardians movie, Maybe not so much the second one, but then Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, and Black Panther were all hilarious as hell. Yeah. And this movie is hilarious as hell. It is mm-hmm. much funnier than I expected it yeah, to be. Yeah, and you're not, you're not, expect- even in the climactic scene, <laughs> Star-Lord does something that almost cost me the rest of the film because mm. I was laughing so hard <laughs> at it. Um, and and yeah, I think you could probably argue maybe there's too much humor in the weighted moments. I don't know about that. I think we need to laugh along with, and these characters have always cracked wise mm-hmm. in the midst of heavy situations. So it's, but 
they they know what they're doing in terms of the comedy, and they really understand these characters at this mm-hmm. point. Um, so, and I think it shows. I think the and, film reflects that. And going back to the, going back to the Rooster Brothers, I found that interesting too, because I guess they have messed with Spider Man because he was in Civil War. So I guess they kind of helped create that. Mm. Uh, but he's obviously never done. They've never done anything with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm sure Gunn was involved sure. on some level. I've heard that he actually but, uh, wrote dialogue. Oh, did for he? Guardians okay. Of the Galaxy. But even just the way they shot them, I mean, just everything. I mean, every everybody felt the same as they felt in their own individual films, which I don't think people realize. That's not that would not be an easy thing to do because there have been like, for instance, Wonder Woman from Wonder Woman to Justice League <laughs> is like two completely different characters. Yes, it is. You know, but here with the Marvel movies, what they've been able to do, and probably because they've all been together this whole way through this journey, everybody feels feels the exact same from movie to movie. Yeah. I get accused. And I think that's impressive. We get accused of being DC haters. We get accused of being MCU haters. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's across the board, but they have they they have always cast well. Yes. In the MCU, almost perfectly, I would say they they hit a home run again here with Josh Brolin playing Thanos. Mm-hmm. He's not going to get the kind of love on the mocap work that Andy Serkis gets, but I think he might should because I feel like a lot of the weight of that character comes from the facial mm-hmm. work that Brolin's and doing his, just and general the general voice work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and villains is a problem with the, the MCU movies. Yeah. That's well, been a big problem, and, a, and well, Thanos stands out. They may have solved it. Black I, Panther I, had a great villain, and now I Thanos agree. is mm-hmm. a great villain. Um, so, you know, there's, I think, a lot of hope moving forward um, for and people Keaton. like me who like but don't love the MCU. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I really enjoyed this. There's lots to enjoy. I'll tell you what, the two and a half hours fucking flew by. Me too. Yeah, said the same there thing. There is no way it feels like two and a half hours the first time you're watching No, this it. is an Avatar. And that's a that's a compliment, mm-hmm. uh, I think, because even even long movies that I love can still feel long, mm-hmm. like Dances with Wolves. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, this is a five-hour movie, but <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, because when you when I, when I thought about that, like, you know, was the link the problem? And there's definitely moments in the movie that are slower than others, but... I have no clue what I would cut. I, I know I do. Well, I'm not, <laughs> you can you can always trim bits here and there, but I'm just saying, like I don't think the running time was was an issue. No, no, there, not there at are all. issues. I have issues with the film. Don't get me wrong, but the running time was not one. Yeah, of no, them. I agree. I agree. Um, I was happy to see a climax that didn't have a up tempo rock song, <laughs> um, and actually had score. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what else can we praise? I think the performances are really good. Uh, you know, a f- who were some of your favorites? I mean, just Tom Holland out. stands out for mm-hmm. me again. He's the best Spider Man, right? I don't even think that's an argument. I, I anymore. cannot believe how great he is. It's really shocking. I mean, I know we're the Spider Man guys here, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and I thought Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were yeah, fine. I, agree. I never I had agree. a problem with them, but they they nailed him. He stood out to me. Um, Pratt's really good. Pratt, I was surprised how much screen time the Guardians got. Yeah, I was too. And I'm, I figure if you're Vin Diesel, at this point you're like, motherfucking, that wrestler took the best role and I'm stuck here doing three lines of Groot every movie. <laughs> and Batista's getting all the awesome. But Diesel is huge. He could have totally played Drax. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, And I bet you he regrets that now. Mm-hmm. Batista might have the funniest scene in the movie. It- he, yeah, Drax is one of those characters that I feel like they use perfectly in Guardians One, and ever yeah. since then they've just been putting him in too much. Mm-hmm. Like, but yes, Drax is very funny. Everybody's funny. Um, yeah, I, I thought uh, Hemsworth really stood out to me. I think I, I don't know what I thought of him after the first Thor movie. I'm not a big fan of the first two Thor movies. Like, I think a lot of people are. I'm not alone in that boat. But um, Hemsworth has really grown into that role, and um, he's very good in this. I don't even know. This might be his. I don't know. He's really good in Ragnarok, too, so maybe it was coming off of that. Chris, did you like this more than we did? Yep. Yeah. (laughs) I I definitely liked it more than the two of you. I don't know if I liked it more than Chris, but it's close. I I think this is the best comic book uh, adaptation since The Dark Knight. Wow. That's bold. That's bold. Um, I could could see feeling that at some point. It's not better than The Dark Knight, but it's up there. Uh, there's images in this movie that I haven't seen in a comic book movie in a really long time. Hmm. And, uh, there were some, that, there were some things that just, just were pure excitement for me. Hmm. Um, also could possibly have something to do with the fact that I had just rewatched all of these movies. Yeah. You were like, and a- I have, <laughs> I have like a lot of like different built in knowledge that I haven't had with all the movies since hmm. Iron Man. Like I've never rewatched since Iron Man any of these movies except for sense purposes, and that's a different thing. And uh, now that I've watched them just 
I, there were things that you know, and we'll get into that in our 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 maxi pod. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, later on, but uh, but like uh, just. <laughs> <laughs> you never done that. <laughs> it's, it's quickly turning into a maximum. Um, I'm a little offended now. I was only invited for the many. Yeah, <laughs> <I know. laughs> but uh, but uh, you know there are things in in all of the all the movies that sort of built. That's the thing about Infinity War is that there are so many movies from the past that are represented in this thing. Yeah, uh, you go to the first captain america is in this and like uh and thor the dark world is in this it's like if i had not seen those before i would have probably been like i don't know what's going on <laughs> at all with the, some of this stuff and i think it it almost it almost matters to have that kind of knowledge going in i would never suggest before every marvel movie re-watching all of them <laughs> But good God, man, it was such a good foundation to get into this one. Probably made you appreciate everything, too, yeah. like what they were actually building to. And maybe they did actually have some. I mean, obviously, until the first Avengers movie or until, I guess, Iron Man made money, mm -hmm. you know, because they almost left out that scene with uh, Samuel Jackson and the Stinger. Mm -hmm. They almost left that out because um, they didn't know what they were doing. But I think you can definitely see a an obvious path they were going. Yeah. And especially after Age of Ultron. Uh, which I'll get more into into the later, uh, you know, the later one that we the later podcast. But um, you know, I have my my opinions have not changed on Age of Ultron. Yeah, and uh, and that one was a just a tremendous letdown. Mm -hmm. uh, and and really just everything leading up to that. I have different perspectives on some that ones ones that I hate that have a different perspective on, and ones that I love that I have different perspectives on. Um, I don't think there was anything like, you're not all of a sudden going to be hearing me say, boy, that Thor, the dark world, yeah. Woo, yes. boy, I gave that just, I just <laughs> gave that short shrift when it came out, man, because it's still a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, ultimately I, I, I really like this. I have seen this twice too. I've seen oh, you oh, saw wow. it? Yeah. I've seen infinity war. Twice. I, th this is one of those that even though it's so obtuse and really long, I really want to see this again too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and, you'll have plenty of time in the next two weeks. And yeah, be, I want to be on the party boat. Hmm? I want to be on the party boat, but I'm not. Oh, on the party of of liking it. Yeah, yeah. I want to be the guy who's dying to go see it again. I'll see it again when, when we send it. You know, I want to see it again because it's so dense, and maybe it would make it a little bit better. I mean. I think I'm like you, Jeremy, where it's like I'm hovering around like 90% or something like that. I'm lower than that. You're lower than that. But yeah, it's right there. But like there was just something that, that prevented me from going all the I'll way. I'll tell you what it heels. is. You want, are we ready to talk spoilers? Well, yeah, let's go into spoilers. No spoilers! I mean, basically, this guy's herself. Miss Luke's what? father is actually Darth Vader. She's, She's the sister and the She's daughter. What? They just no, 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 no. I'm reading the books. It's half a movie. It is half of a movie. Yes. You Harry Potter 7 to me. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you did it in a way that none of those deaths have any weight. They might. Goddamn um, Spider-Man is not dead. No, no, no. no Black no. Panther is not dead. Not spider No, but we didn't think they were going to die anyways. We knew they well, had more Then movies. why is the movie trying to fake me out thinking... Trying to make me think I don't dead. know that it is. Though. I don't know if it is either. Uh, and it, it might more back up your point about it being half a movie because it's not trying to tell us. I will say, though... I am completely different from some of the people who are watching this movie. The guy next to me, like, he put his hands over his face and was, like, devastated at <laughs> yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, do you not know that all of these characters are going to be back, like, easily? Well, that's my like, point, is that everybody, that people saying, bring your tissues. Mm -hmm. The people that I said earlier were having a religious experience, they're bawling their eyes out when Spider-Man right. dies. Well, and I can't get there. I felt like that was more with Gamora and um, uh, Loki. I felt like those were what those two might be permanent. I felt like those were what people were talking about. Yeah, I think they definitely could be permanent because I mean, the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie could be set before that. I feel uh, like I've seen know. a bunch of people saying that Spider-Man ending teared him up. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, yeah, wow, no, well, that's weird. Well, I mean, because he's like, I don't want to go yet, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Stark. I mean, it's a sad and scene. Plus, also, here's the thing: it's a difference between what we know and what the characters know. The characters don't think that they're going to be. Bad. That's the difference. Like Tony Stark believes he has fucked up everything now. And he believes that he has taken this child basically into this, 
He's taken him under his wing, and he is responsible for killing him. That's going to fuck Tony Stark but I think, in the mm-hmm. next movie. It yeah. is, for sure. But don't you think it's asking too much of the audience to to try and forget that we know Spider-Man Homecoming 2 is already on the calendar? I don't know. But I mean, that's but I mean, that's just going to be part of the story, too. Right. I mean, they ended a season of Sherlock with Sherlock killing himself and everybody knew he was coming back. But it kind of became more like this is a weird comparison, but it kind of became more like, how is he going to come back as opposed to whether or not he's going to come back? But I don't feel like a lot of movies do that. I think it's I think it's going to ultimately they're going to play it that way. But I feel like the movie wants to give you a gut punch at the end emotionally by playing the deaths as real. I think one thing that's interesting about this, though, is that the studio came out and said that they were because originally when they announced all these things a few years ago at San Diego or whatever, they were calling them Avengers Infinity War Part One yeah. and Avengers Infinity War Part yeah. Two. Then they came out and said, uh, we're not going to release the title of the second movie, which kind of put everything up in the air. So while you're watching this, like I said, feeling like things were at stake, a lot of that actually had to do with that because no, I, I'm, I'm about I to get know, mad now. I didn't know if this was actually going to end. No, but they, they did that on purpose. I saw an interview I, with I one agree. of the Russo brothers and he said, we wanted all the focus to be on Infinity War. And so we said something. Now everybody's blown it up and they think the, the title of Inf- Avengers 4 is a spoiler, but it's not. Yeah. We just wanted yeah, the focus yeah, yeah. on Infinity War. They I fucked just, with you. I just said it was interesting. <laughs> first off, I didn't say I liked it. I said it was interesting. But what I did find kind of interesting is that, you know, I mean, essentially with the end of this movie, uh, Thanos wins. Now, granted, that's going to be changed. I get that there's going to be a second movie, but I think that kind of makes this movie work by itself. We're in. A, we are now in an age where they are fucking with you on the trailer. Oh yeah, to try sure. and surprise you with the movie. Sure. Right. Like I'm going to stop watching trailers not because of Dicer zero frames bullshit, yeah. but because I don't want to be fucked with. <laughs> I want to be shown some tease of what the movie is. But it's the same thing with the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer where they had that money shot of Tony and Spider-Man swinging through the city. That never happens in the movie. Yeah. Well, and they they re-edited the trailer too. There's a there's a part in the trailer where you think Tony Stark's talking to Gamora, and he never actually meets Gamora in the movie. That's the but same they, thing, but a little different. Yeah, but I'm saying, but they do do. I mean, they, that's that's pretty common with trailers. I'm talking about inserting characters into scenes and climactic moments, so they'll think. No, they're no, there. that was weird. That was very odd. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not. For, I'm just saying, it didn't bother me the way it bothers you. I guess. No, I, I guess I mean, <laughs> I'm going to end up. The angry guy who hated this movie. <laughs> no, no, movie. you're fine, man. And I, I'm giving it a B, B minus. I liked it. There's nothing I wrong with just that. just don't think, just give me both movies. Just, I get that you don't want to release a five-hour movie because you make half as much money. Put them both out at the same time as two separate movies and let me watch them back to back and pay you twice. Yeah. Don't make half a movie. Did Kill Bill bother you? I'm just curious. I'm just thinking about other movies that have done this. Um. Well, well yeah. Well, it did. I don't okay. know. Kill Bill. That might just be a problem. Kill Bill didn't seem like... Uh, just half a movie though no it has a better place to stop in the middle yeah and but harry potter uh in the deathly house part one is definitely <laughs> worth yes yeah. and i i think yeah. i will say i don't i don't think i like infinity war as much as chris but way better than harry potter in the deathly house part one in my opinion well see and here's that maybe this is the problem is that i i I feel like we've we've moved into an era of episodic filmmaking mm-hmm. where you can think of the mcu as a television show yeah and this was the season finale for season two and all the other movies that have come before, the 20 of them or whatever, was season one and season two. And at the end of a television show, you'll often get these big cliffhangers. Mm-hmm. Oh, what did they do? How are they going to get back from... Spider-Man can't really be dead. It's not a TV show. It's a movie. I plunked down $11.5 to see a beginning, a middle, and an end. And I only got half of that. It may be sort of the Netflix influence, man. It may be. I mean, that's what I'm saying is, are we in a new era now where I just need to accept I, it? And we I already, think we might be. And we already said this is something that's never been done before. Right. Now it's going so to be done may, over and over yeah, now. Yeah, and not very well. They've already tried and not very well. Now, but. I haven't read too much on... I think everybody agrees that all those characters are pretty much coming back. Uh, I haven't read too much... Uh, but the theories that keep going along, people are like, well, what about, you know, what it seems like the time stone is going to be involved. Of course, the time stone is going to be involved. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, my my thing is, is that uh, like, I don't think people are going into detail about why what they think is going to happen. I, I mean, I think Thanos is going to be upset that Gamora is dead hmm. and he's going to try to go back to that time. But that would create a paradox because he doesn't have the time stone until after he, Gamora dies. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he has so, to get the soul stone first, and then he goes. I, right. I doubt stone. this movie's going to stop over a time travel paradox. I think though. it would. 
Really? I think it would. Yeah, I think so. Because there's no way he can have the time stone unless unless there's some other. They could always write this. There's some other way you can have the time stone and then not have it at the same well, time. Well, I was a little. I mean, again, I I nitpick movies for a living, so mm-hmm. take everything I say with a grain of salt. I was a little frustrated when Thanos uses the time stone at the end to undo her exploding vision stone. Nothing else changes and goes back in time except Wanda and that stone in Vision's head. And that could be how that thing works, though. Doesn't if you point it at something yeah. or something because I, Doctor I, Strange wasn't. It's, well, that was. I have questions about that. How yeah. did he see the futures where they fail? if he's dead how did he see the future where they succeed if he's can he see futures where he's already dead how's that work uh, i don't know well, I, I mean maybe if he got up to the point where he died yeah, that's, what, that's what i thought it was it was whatever that battle was he saw all the different scenarios how that battle ended and i guess and I but think, he said he saw one where they where won, they won and, that's and, where, and now he's dead. he's dead yeah and that's where well then that's where he gives the time stone away that's the one scenario that, but how did he see past his own death to know that that led to winning what do you mean past his own death he okay he gives thanos the time stone yeah. to save tony's life uh-huh. and then when thanos snaps he dies yeah so yeah how did how he, how did he, he ever those? see past that death to know that giving the time stone to thanos was the way to succeed mm, that's a good question yeah i don't know i don't know if you can now, see and again, the, I, the answer the, i mean the answer would be that the that it happens before that death then because it, or he doesn't die because if the if he if the if the whole way to win is to give him the time stone and he goes back trying to save Gamora or whatever he's trying to do, then he's alive in that scenario. If they win, yeah. So that assumes that we all know is that everybody is not actually dead. I'm actually now actively wondering if a guy can die and then come back to life through time travel, but still see the gap in between and what happens there. Or maybe which he is, doesn't see the gap. Which maybe is, he just sees the, the which, final yeah, I don't know. I'm overthinking it. This, no, this no, part, no. I, this is the kind of stuff that interests the crap out of me, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and then that gets into other things, too, about this movie, that if you wanted to really start nitpicking and stuff, and, and obviously, even though I loved it, there are parts in this, I can't wait till we send this, but, yeah. Yeah. like, <laughs> the, the, you know, there are, there are, there are points where there's, Thanos has a, a gauntlet that has six Infinity Stones on it, and at one point, even with two, this guy has every bit of power in the world. And there's so many times you're like, you could just end this so quickly. Yep. You don't even need your henchmen or whatever. He does way too much punching. That yeah. You know, and that's <laughs> yeah. A, but I don't know. The the fact that he wanted all the stones, I think that just fit into his character. I mean, clearly he was just like this madman that wanted all the power. I mean, I think mm-hmm. it was just as simple as that, which isn't that interesting. But No, I think it's deeper than that. I think he I think he truly believes the universe needs balance. No. He, oh, that's, for sure. Yeah. That, but he's a madman. That's definitely. Now, and even that, even that motivation, as much as I... As as much as I uh, relate to it, especially if you drive through rush hour and stuff like that. <laughs> we should get Chris like a toy version of the Infinity Gauntlet that he can wear Believe while me, driving. I drive through rush hour <laughs> every time I, I go home from I here. I want half the people gone. <laughs> and nobody would miss them. He's like, why is this not working? Nobody would miss them. But I keep uh, I keep wondering if, if, if he does have this true, like, I consider killing half the people in the universe mercy did we not did we forget the douglas adams uh thing where you, the space is big yep. very very big yep. like if you really had some sort of uh mercy involved why don't you just go to a planet and say i'm gonna kill half of you unless you all relocate to this one planet these other planets that were there's so many of them out there or <laughs> arguably hey man you've got the uh infinity gauntlet with all the power stones and everything why don't you just make more resources <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you can bend reality that shit he does in the benicio del toro place that nowhere uh-huh. where he turns drax and caterpillar lady into <laughs> like mantis, mantis. <laughs> i don't know her name she was surprisingly important in this movie i don't know i was i was i was surprised about that um, too he doesn't do that like ever again i know he at the end at he's fighting time. iron man and spider-man and doctor strange and i'm like turn one of them into like a uh, weird <laughs> oh, ikea yeah. art or <laughs> something <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of things where it's like why didn't you do that first like there's that part where dr strange creates like 30 of him yeah and just starts massively attacking thanos and you're like why didn't you start with that like that should have been your lead in i saw and then there's the part where which granted i still don't understand this i know the force field gets opened up a little bit in wakanda but i'm still assuming they have force fields underground but 
those big ass vehicles just come up from under yeah. the ground. I'm like, why didn't you lead with that yeah. instead of sending 800 like cannibalistic yeah. tigers <laughs> or whatever War the fuck? I had a, oh yeah. I had a like, <laughs> was I was thinking Hunger Games for some <laughs> yeah. reason. I had yeah. an Anakin. I have the the high ground kind of battle yeah. strategy moment when Black Panther decides, hey, they're running around the force field and may eventually flank us as one of ten of them make it through the force field. Let's just open it right in front of us yeah. and start fighting. There but, you go. I was like, how. Well, that, and you know what? That's one thing, by the way. I've seen the movie twice, and either I've been distracted or I can't hear what they're saying because there's so much going on. I don't even really understand that strategy. Like, I, I don't, don't even understand why they needed to open it up unless, like, the constant running into the force field. He was trying to create a bottleneck yeah, to where well, they yeah, knew exactly but, where they but, were going. But I, then I don't understand why, if, you're go- if your strategy was to, well, maybe, maybe they're all just you know they're dumb they're dumb enemies and they're like mm-hmm. okay we don't know that there might be weaknesses in this thing so let's go through the bottleneck you know yeah. i mean you know that that's always a possibility there but um but yeah that's one of those things that all, all of a sudden he's like open up 17a or whatever the <laughs> fuck it is and uh <laughs> yeah well their big thing was that i mean they didn't want him to go around to the backside because they were saying that then they couldn't protect vision but oh and oh my god, I hope Vision's dead, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> but um they couldn't protect Vision. But how could they not protect Vision? Because Scarlet Witch is fucking up there. Mm-hmm. And then they even make that whole big scene where she comes down to help them, destroys everything in front of her, and then um I cannot remember her name from Black Panther. It's like Oyoke o- yeah. or Okoye. Yeah. 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 She's well, like, What? Why didn't why, she do why this was before? she up there the whole time? I saw okay, yeah. so I had a lot of people on Twitter telling me that she has written a sin for us or that she would be excellent at cinema sins. <laughs> and I'm like, You people don't understand it. Like Scarlet Witch had to be up there because she was the only one strong enough to destroy that well, stone. But, but that, mm-hmm. and, and exactly. And then why but that's what I'm saying. If Scarlet Witch is up there and can take out like 800 of these things with one blow then why yeah. do they care yeah. if they get around to no, the other end? you're right and then you don't open the fucking game right or yeah 11a or whatever the hey, but yeah. at least we got some laughs with bruce trying to figure out how to use a hulk buster armor mm-hmm. okay that is one thing i i how do you not have him turn into the hulk at some point well, that because makes they've no got sense. bigger plans apparently mm-hmm. what are, what are the bigger plans though? it's because it's half of a movie it's half of a movie <laughs> he's got a he's gonna come out at the end yeah. but having it but but having him turn in, I don't know. That just that made that made no sense to me. But that was just from a storytelling standpoint. They chose to tell the story that way. That's fine. Well, they, they have but been. I didn't get that. They have been sort of tooling with this since Thor Ragnarok that he he was Hulk for two years yeah. and and he wasn't able to change back and everything and and then he gets his ass thrashed by Thanos on that which ship. is pretty cool. And I wonder yeah. if it's a financial thing too because I mean I understand this movie costs like three hundred million or whatever to make, but I mean they still have to cut corners at some point because they can't. They you know, you know where they cut? And I wonder if they cut it at Hulk. That I don't last know. shot of like floating Banner's head in the Hulk buster. Oh, that was so bad. Mm-hmm. That, that was, was awful. Oh, I cannot figure out if that was actually him. I was like, open up Premiere. I'll do a better job than that. <laughs> Jesus. Or even if that was actually him, it looked terrible. It I looked mean, bad. either way, you do something with that shot. <laughs> it looked bad. Oh, um, that was the worst shot in the movie. Though, I will I talk about some things that I really did like in this. I love the fact that Thanos throws an entire fucking moon down. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. <laughs> that shit is amazing to me. I agree. And like when and and it's really it's a really sort of a thing that I wish there were more of in this where something that's just like jaw dropping, like you would never imagine, happens on screen. And here he's just he just he just you know, pulls his hand together and the moon just explodes and there's just asteroids coming down and you're like, God damn it. Yeah. This is why we go to the movies. You're right. I, I thought for the most part, other than parts of the Wakanda stuff, just because there was so much going on, I really liked the action in this movie. Mm-hmm. I like the action in this movie more than I've liked just about any Marvel movie. By the way, the Russo brothers have come a long mm-hmm. fucking way mm-hmm. since Winter Soldier and Civil War. Yeah, since Civil War. Too. Yeah. Civil War, good God. Okay. Look, I know every, a lot of people like this movie, and I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think I'm not really on one side or another with Civil War. But, <laughs> Ironically. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, uh, man, the action scenes in that are a fucking disaster. They really are. They are a fucking disaster. It's the worst example 
I would say probably one of the worst examples of what they do wrong in in MCU yes. movies and action. Movies. Yeah, well, and there was only one moment in this one, Infinity War, where I thought I don't understand what's happening right now, and mm-hmm. it was it was a Cap moment in the Wakanda battle where t- between cuts and the frenetic things he was doing, it got a little confusing. Mm-hmm. But that only made me realize how little of that had happened throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. I know the uh, editing the only, in this movie is great. The only reason that I struggled to figure out exactly what was happening in the final battle with Thanos on Titan was because it was moving so fast, not because it was cut too much. Mm -hmm. And I actually stopped to go, how did they plan out all of this? Because (laughs) this is intricate, especially that Star-Lord moment where he's like, gives the finger, boom. (laughs) He falls down the highway. I have never laughed that hard. I have never never seen you move. Chris, like, I thought Chris was going to fall out of his seat. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) But how did they plan that That down to the letter? That actually might have been the funniest moment. I I take back thing about Yeah, that that was my favorite. Up until then, it was, there's a Spider-Man and an Ant-Man? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but honestly, I feel like there's a little too much of of hey, who are you? I'm this yeah, person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's a little too much of oh, he's been gone for forever. Let's casually dismiss I, that. I enjoyed the like. Parents, why did though. why did Black Widow and Banner not get a scene? Oh, that was terrible. Talking. That was. I, terrible. I, wanted, yeah. I wanted to talk about. And that. you know what? They that may was, have had one. They may have. And it, you're talking about two hours and forty minutes. Well, that, so I like, could think of a few things I would cut out to, to make room. Why for is that. Black Widow in this movie? Well, because that. God, okay, it's laughable <laughs> in this movie at the end, all the machine guns. And then they have this moment where you're going to die all on your own, just like he did. And then Scott, or Black Widow's like, she's not alone. And then another girl from Wakanda's like, yeah, I'm here too. And I'm like, oh, the only three women in this entire movie that you have not killed or tortured... And you're going to give him a bone. Anything Black yeah. Panther's nice sister is going to show Thank up you. all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that was ridiculous. Um, and then and then um, there's, you know, the people they leave out. I mean, they don't leave out that many, I guess. What they leave out Ant-Man and Ho- Hawkeye, I didn't care. And then there was that mysterious no Valkyrie on the Thor ship. Mm. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's true. Like, I, I'm, I'm going, we're, I mean, we can only guess that she saw the Thanos ship and, and left because... That's part of her character, well, right? Is it, didn't, She's left before. Isn't when it explicit though that Thanos intentionally left half those Asgardians alive? I don't know, man. Everybody's dead lying on that ship. I but- think there's a line that he said he only killed half the Asgardians on that ship. Oh, I didn't. I didn't catch that one. I guess that's part of his whole balance. Well, that's strategy. the thing is he only kills half. Ah. Well, except for the the one the the star place where Peter Dinklage is, and he killed everybody except him. Mm-hmm. Unless there were two people. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe there were only two. Yeah, maybe so. Um, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know. I, all my complaints are, are nitpicks. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the movie. I did not love it. I'm not going to go back again in the theater. If anything, I would pay to go see that Mission Impossible trailer again. <laughs> Every time that Mission Impossible mm-hmm. trailer comes on, I get giddy and start <laughs> laughing. Like, there's nothing I'm more looking forward well, to than that. You know what? The, the And I know this is an aside, but man, Henry Cavill looks amazing in that movie. He looks yeah. like a badass. That, that scene where he's like... <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why. That's the weirdest thing. Though. I don't know why he has to take like the practice punch. Right I before. don't know, but <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's great. He's either cracking his knuckles or he's got yeah. like... he's got Got weapons oh, yeah. there, or and then something. and then they go into the bathroom and they're fucking like elbow yeah. punching oh each other. But, 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 and he's like taking the time to roll his sleeves up for the fight. Like he's got his sleeves like perfectly rolled yeah, up. But no, like, there's there's scene there's the, the just just his face in there like the the helicopter scene. He's like put he's got his head out of the helicopter and everything. He's just a he's just evil, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's the mustache. <laughs> yeah, it's the mustache. It was, uh, <laughs> also, my first time seeing the full trailer for Venom. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know where I have no idea how anybody feels about this. I thought it was fucking awesome. I did too. Yeah. A lot of people are bitching like about the Tom it. Tom Hardy, I thought he looked great be, being this like nervous mm-hmm. kind of high talking, nothing like you've ever seen Tom Hardy, and then just the general idea of the action where. The suit is fighting for him, or yeah. the symbiote is, before he even realizes what it can do. Uh, it's symbiote. Symbiote. I'm, I'm really kidding. It actually give, is symbiote. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I said it right. I, I said it right. I couldn't care less. I didn't know how it was pronounced. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, <laughs> well, somebody, somebody here told me I did it wrong. <laughs> no, it's uh, the trailer says symbiote, like over and over. Yeah, yeah, so I'll make sure and get it right hmm. when we do the sins video. Or wrong when we do yeah. I'm glad <laughs> to hear that, though. I thought it looked good, too. And I, I, like, I saw all these people complaining about it on Twitter. I'm like, I go really? to movies with my friend Jason. He knows what I do for a living, and so it's become this thing where a trailer will run and then he'll turn to me and I'll, <laughs> I'll give some kind of response. Like we saw the trailer for The Meg. 
Oh, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. The trailer ended, and Jason looked at me, and I said, it's this far away from being a Sharknado movie, and everybody knows it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and <laughs> when, the, when the Venom trailer ended, I was like, that looks fucking awesome. And mm-hmm. that, that's pretty rare that I'm that excited Ven- for trailer. The Venom trailer, I've seen it three times now, and I don't know. The first time, I was like, that's cool. Now it's getting to the point of, like, this looks like Spawn to me. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and, and, I, and I hope that another trailer comes out It at is some a little point. Spawny. Yeah, a little bit. So, I, so I, I, I will reserve judgment until I see the movie, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, the, the more the trailer goes, the more I'm like, when he's like, I am Venom, and he turns into the wicked fucking monster and everything, it's still, I'm still like, okay, now I've seen it. I've seen it enough. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to see it a hundred times this yes, fucking summer. Yeah, you are. Um, but um, anybody, anything else we need to, set to add to Infinity War? Yeah. What do you think? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, we could talk about the he- specific humor things in there uh, mm-hmm. once again uh, dr strange's cape finds a way to steal scenes yes, oh, yes. Yes. It's and, great. You know, it's so fantastic it's like and and there's a there's a point where dr strange is being like held captive or whatever by that there's like four guys they all have different fucking names like i don't if know if you don't know them then you're not a true fan yeah, proxima I'm, midnight I, yeah. yeah proxima midnight is the one that i hear yeah. most but then this dude like the you know the fucking like the, what the dude looked like after he picked the wrong grail in Last Crusade. <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> that guy. Um, Are you talking about Thanos' henchman? Or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I like Ebony Maw, I think is his name. Oh, yeah. I, the, you're talking about the one that they, they send out the air, yeah, which was a, also that really old awesome. Old movie scene. aliens? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, another another great another great line though is uh, when uh, Chris Pratt, you know, it's like Footloose. Yeah, is that still the greatest movie of all time? And Spider Man's like never was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the, the you know, and you guys were talking about Drax has some of the funniest stuff in there. Like the the why is Gamora is a is yeah. a really great line after you know like who's Gamora. <laughs> but that also brings that whole thing to point where you were bringing up or about the who are you people and yeah. everything like who fucking says this shit to yeah. strangers you mm-hmm. know there, there's a um there's a john mulaney bit like where he's talking about like like every amnesia movie there's somebody who wakes up out of their coma and their husband or wife is sitting next to her and they're like who are you get out of <laughs> would you tell that to a total stranger you know that type of thing. um and we haven't we haven't talked at all about downey um i thought downey was was the best he's been in a minute. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed his role in it. I really, it, you felt all the weight on him where he yeah. felt he was responsible. That's the thing. It's the first time they've given, given him, him sim- that weight. Yeah. And like when he went to space, like that whole bit where he's talking to Peter and like, this is, this is a suicide mission. Like we're not going back basically. Yeah. It's like, you know, I thought all that stuff was really well, good. Well, yeah. Even he gets that phone call with Pepper where he gets, yeah. cu- he's trying to apologize and even that gets cut off mid, mid call. Uh, he's just, he, I think he's as a character, he's See, given the, more and those, to do. And those are the moments where I could kind of understand the teary eyed stuff but that's not what people are talking about like you said they're talking about spider-man apparently who's obviously going to be back next summer yeah yeah um there was another great moment too where um peter's on the bus and he 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 has the spidey sense and everything he sees the alien ship and he turns to ned and he's like ned i need a i need a distraction ned without even thinking yeah he's like oh <laughs> shit we're <laughs> gonna die <laughs> what i love is because like i actually was watching porn bit, i was yeah. thinking yeah i was thinking to myself I, he, there's no way he's actually had time to see and process the spaceship yeah. out there yeah <laughs> they've done this before yeah. yeah this is not the first time ned has had to create a diversion right. i yeah. loved it yeah ned is it continues to be one of the best things yeah, about that, that whole sequence where the you had strange and spider-man and iron man all together fighting off the henchmen or whatever that was a great bit yeah I mean, there, were, there were so many good actions yeah that was that was the editing just was just so top notch. If anything, movie. maybe it'll get more people watching Aliens. Right? Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> like people who didn't get you, that reference. You know, it's funny though. Like that, that, that he did. He it is a joke when he says that old movie Aliens. <laughs> you know what? It is an old fucking movie. Yep. It's thirty two years old. Yeah. And yeah. it's like at this point, like it's a joke, but it's also not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I really like the action in this or like the comedy and uh and the the color palette just t- is mm-hmm. sort of prepares you for this is a much darker episode and everything. This is why it looks like it's aiming for that Empire Strikes Back yeah. type of chapter and everything. It's not as bright as usual. Even the like brighter scenes or whatever are are, are muted a little bit. Although I will say even Empire Strikes Back like it's somehow gotten this reputation that it it's half a movie or it ends on too much of a cliffhanger but i feel like there's a, a solid story arc there mm-hmm. and oh, it just doesn't end definitely. on a on a happy we won the battle right uh whereas this movie again i think you could call it an a plus love it 100 percent 
and some part of you would still have to agree with me that it's half a movie. Yeah, no, I, it needs uh, when Avengers four comes out. Nobody's just going to watch this one, right? And stop there, <laughs> just like just nobody ever watches Harry Potter <laughs> but seven. It, but it's like, yeah, but yeah. it's kind of like it, like I, I, it chapter one or whatever you want to call it. I don't think I'm ever not going to like this Infinity War movie. But if the next one like isn't good, or I don't even, or if it's just mediocre, maybe this one goes down a notch. That's the thing. But at the same time, if the next one is great. Maybe this goes up a little How bit. How much? Yeah, I don't know. So that's kind of that is like Return of the Jedi could have sucked flat out balls. It could have been total Ewok. And some people Empire. wall to wall Ewoks, <laughs> yeah. and it wouldn't have dented Empire. Mm-hmm. But this movie and its quality score in your mind, it, it will hinge on the next well, one. Well, an even more I recent so. example, I don't think Last Jedi has... D- I mean, I think people that liked Force Awakens and disliked Last Jedi, best I can tell, I don't think Last Jedi ruined Force Awakens for them. No, not for me. I, no. Man, I, I'm usually with you on these type of things. <laughs> you don't have to be I, with I, me. I, no, I, I am usually, more in Chris's No, seriously, here. usually usually when you say something like this is half a... I keep... I, it usually rings true to me. When I hear something like this, I am not getting the Deathly Hallows part one feeling from this. Like, I feel like this is its own chapter. And yes, you will want to see you're going to you want to see the other next chapter, just like you would see any other Marvel movie or anything. You are right about it being episodic, that it's more like a TV show than a movie nowadays. But I don't think it's any. I mean, they've run cliffhangers since the beginning of this franchise, the whole thing since Iron Man. You might do a cliffhanger as a stinger. Or like a credits thing, but I think I think most MCU movies have an ending. I mean, mm-hmm. Civil War definitely ended on a cliffhanger. I mean, you had the whole fo- well. I mean, it still ends on its own, but I mean, you have the phone, and which the phone actually came back into play. That was funny. But as it, fuck. There, 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 this doesn't seem like there's just a whole bunch of pointlessness leading to the second movie. Well, maybe that's maybe there's a connotation when I say half a movie that suggests it's pointless. I don't think it's pointless. I just think it's incomplete. If you know that Spider Man is going to come back. Then this is not the end of this story. Yeah. And we need the rest of it to truly process what we've just seen. I don't think that's the case in a standard film. I don't mm-hmm. think Fast and Furious movies do that. Mm-hmm. I think movies, just, like, who is the character in this movie that has an arc? Who completely shifts from one viewpoint to another by the end? I mean, Thanos? I don't, he doesn't even shift. If he shifts, it's going to be the next movie I when he misses Gamora. I think he does, I think he does moment, kind of shift. Especially with the Gamora death. Yeah. There's definitely some shifting there. I mean, he's really the thinking very, about that. The, oh, man, I don't think he is. The The mm. very end of this, he has that, that what I'm going to always refer to as Dumbledore dream moments at this point, because it's always like some death person yeah. who's dead tells you some mess, like deus ex machina message or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, she asks him, what was what did it cost? And he he's like it's everything or whatever and 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 I think that's what his arc is is that it has he has gone from I'm totally right about this to even like when he's like looking out in the sunset and everything he's got that weighing heavily on him that he he killed his favorite daughter over all of this and he I don't think he's going to be able to take it. By the way, as an aside, what would happen if he hadn't gone with Gamora to that planet? What if he, he wouldn't have gone? Have what if he, he would have had, he would have had to go back. He would have had to be like, yeah, go get your daughter. You can't yeah, yeah. have this I mean, stone. I think, I think that's what would have happened. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't think we're as far apart on this as it sounds like mm-hmm. we are. Uh, I think we're mostly playing at semantics at right. this point. Um, because I, I, I get what you're saying. He has regret. I don't necessarily feel for me personally, like that was a fulfilling arc because it's not done. If he has regret, that's going to fester and turn into him trying to undo mm. what he's done. And that is the arc. Um, and I don't feel like this movie gives us any, like, I don't feel like he thinks he's wrong by the end of this movie. In fact, I do see, I do see the, the sparkle, the J.J. Abrams lens flare of, flare of regret in his eye, <laughs> but he's mostly enjoying that peaceful sunset. That's what oh, he yeah, wanted. He's I, happy. I, I think you're right. And I don't want him to completely regret it. Cause I mean, I want him to be a villain. I mean, I mean, cause you know, I think Loki lost a lot of his luster once he became more of a indecisive asshole basically to me he did i feel like everybody else liked him more or like you know like on fucking like star trek voyager where they tried to make the borg human and all that bullshit but um like when they do that with villains that was so random i apologize (laughs) no when they do that with villains that gets on my nerves and i don't i definitely don't want thanos to all of a sudden be fighting alongside iron man in a future (laughs) (laughs) and real quick you saw it again i cannot figure out how iron man didn't die 
In what? In, oh, uh, when he the gets plant. stabbed? Because, I mean, isn't he stabbed all the way through his body? Yeah, And then, but, like, the next time we see him, he's walking around. But no, he, there's a point where he, he does some of the... Now, I, that, this is never explained. <laughs> okay, okay. But he, 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 yeah, he's got something. some sort of, like... Spray device. Like, the same caulk. shit Rocket fixed the shit <laughs> like, with in Guardians he's 2. He's got some, like, human caulk but, or yeah. something. But that was, like, <laughs> but, I, didn't, I didn't think Thor had died at the beginning. Um, and that was fine with that because he's a fucking god. I mean, I could see him getting, and he could be in space and all that stuff. But when Iron Man got stabbed, I was like, "Oh my god, they just fucking killed Iron Man!" And I'm like thinking maybe they did. Well, by the way, they haven't explained these uh, these weird fix it things. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two has a part where Rocket is like fixing the ship by basically. Yeah. Doing that, oh, like, yeah. spray yeah, the, on yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't hear me, but I just yeah. said that. That's the same yeah, shit yeah, that yeah. Rocket is using. Yeah, yeah. and then and then later like on, they do it with the, the ship after they knock Dude out. And then, and then yeah, then he's got a whole hole in his body that he's like, I'm going to just spray paint Vision this. didn't have that shit. No, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. This, I, that brings me to another thing that I don't, that I don't like, although with a two-hour and 40-minute runtime, I, I guess you're just going to have to swallow it a lot of time. In the last time we saw Vision and and Scarlet Witch, they they were like okay, they're kind of like flirty or whatever, and you never thought that was yeah. Now they're fucking. Yeah, they're totally fucking. Well, it's yeah. and, and it's it's kind of cheap because it's played for this big emotional impact at the end that and that's a problem and that is for this problem. movie because it we haven't developed a relationship with them yet. Gamor- I would it, even say Gamora and Star Lord is yeah, the same. Yeah, that thing. was weird because it's obvious Star Lord is, is you know head over heels in love with her. She has never in any of the movies or anything ever said you know anything or even remotely suggested. Well, it, I mean, there's been she looks. does. There's she, been looks. she does at the end of Volume Two because the I love you scene just felt a little false. Yeah, it did. But it, it, but in Volume Two, they, they, the whole time in Volume Two is him saying like unspoken moments between us and That's everything, true. and she's like, no, no, there's no such thing. And then at the end, she's like. That felt like one of those unspoken moments you were talking about. That so yeah. there was an acknowledgement. Still, you're right. There, we haven't had them as a couple yet, and all this whole thing. Still, I mean, even as a friend, though, you would feel, you know. But that's would true. you? Would but you? That didn't feel like a friend. I like, love you. No, it's it's a it's a small problem for me that the movie kind of hinges on Star Lord just losing his shit when he mm, finds out Gamora's yeah. dead. Yeah, that would make more sense for me if it was Tony finding out Pepper was dead because she's been in more movies. Yeah, and I've yeah. seen them as or, a relationship. Yeah, or Spider Man finding out Aunt May was dead. I've right. already seen Something. them in bed together in a movie. <laughs> like, there's emotional impact. The, those two, both both of those, Vision and Scarlet Witch, and then Gamora and Star Lord, are played in this film for an emotional impact that isn't quite earned. And I don't think Vision's ever been a very interesting character. No, and, he's and, stupid. And what I remember <laughs> from what I've read of him in the comics, when I used to read comics, he wasn't a very interesting. He was never one of my favorites. Um, I that the scene where he dies, like that's supposed to be a big emotional moment, and the emotion for me was more. Oh, I'm so glad he's fucking dead. Yeah, thank mm-hmm. God. I hope he's never in another gone. movie. Yeah, he's so boring. Yeah, I mean, you he have adds nothing. To if anything, anything, I hope they take stock of their characters in in rewatching this film and mm-hmm. the MCU people because you see somebody like Rocket, who's funny. Oh, consistent the, the rocket and thor stuff is i don't awesome. need i don't need rocket in that wakanda battle at the end but i enjoyed him there mm-hmm. and he wasn't wasted or useless and thor showing up and just blowing away that was actually a really cool moment because you well, yeah but, but i don't re- know how he knew where to go but, but the yeah. reason i liked that though is because you had all this build up where that you know they were having a struggle like building the hammer and all, all that stuff just kind of built a lot of tension and it went towards that moment so then you get like this big like superman shows up moment you know you get kind of that well, yeah. i was half expecting that zeppelin song again <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah and well and and that's also it also uh protected it from being a true deus ex machina too yes. is because we're seeing yeah. all of this lead up to to him getting his his axe now he's got an axe yeah which is you know i guess that was another thing that i had a question about is like uh, the whole thor ragnarok uh, by the end of it they're like you don't need your hammer yeah, and but you do. Yeah, but, <laughs> but actually you do because you need to like you need to stab Thanos with it at the end. And they've d- they've done a couple one eighties on this hammer because yeah. even in even in uh, Age of Ultron they're all oh, it's all try to lift the hammer. But in hindsight, that was the hammer really was Thor's power in there? I guess yeah. that's why they couldn't it, lift it. It's supposed. To, I mean, I I never understood that scene because it's supposed to be this magical hammer yeah. that it's it's basically program to only pick up be picked up by thor and they're all like you know well of course you can't lift it and, then, and like thor's all like like lording it over him too like ha, ha, ha. maybe he doesn't tell him that 
Maybe he just says, maybe he just says it's a heavy hammer and you try to pick it up. Maybe and, it's all like a game, a mental trick. Yeah. Like mm, that yeah. guy you were talking about in the episode I wasn't here for. <laughs> push. But I guess there's been enough mm. in the other Thor the, appearances. Yeah, yeah, Mentalist. Push. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I guess there's been enough in the other Thor appearances, though, to where I totally bought that sequence. I totally bought that he could come in and just waste away all those people. Whereas, just, like, Scarlet Witch, I have no fucking clue how her well, powers are. That, again, that's... I'll talk more about this on Thursday when we do the MCU full podcast. Mm-hmm. Maxi pad. <laughs> Maxi pod <laughs> meant to say pod said pad and you guys are getting your MCU on this not way. as funny right. that way uh, but I still I, ha- I still have the same problem of not really having any idea who's stronger than who because oh, I yeah. feel like I feel like Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange have both shown us stuff in previous movies that suggested to me they would be much more powerful than they are in this movie mm-hmm. the way even even in Thor Ragnarok where Doctor Strange is just basically portaling Thor's ass anywhere he wants him to yes. go. I saw online, I didn't make this up, but I agree with it. Why didn't you just portal Thanos into the sun? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why didn't you try he to can portal have, Thanos somewhere? He can have Loki falling, a god, by the way, falling for 30 straight minutes well, and even, through this thing, but he, yeah. he doesn't even Was try there, that with Thanos. I, you've seen it twice, maybe you know, and I know Benedict Wong says something right before Banner calls uh, Cap. But why is ben- Benedict Wong gone the rest of the movie? I think he has to. He has to guard that one. Section. Okay, okay. He has to. That's, he's sort of duty bound to to guard that. And I forgot what they call the like a sanct- sanctuary, sanctuary yeah, or whatever. whatever. Okay, okay. He's duty bound to do that. Okay, that makes a lot of uh, sense. He's able. I guess he's able to. Now, I now I, I'm not sure why he's able to just hang out in New York for a little bit for a while when he does that. But because he goes back to. Um, is it Hong Kong? It's not Hong Kong. It's it's Tibet or whatever or whatever the place that oh, they yeah, are yeah. in Doctor Strange. I mm. can't remember what it is. But um, I think that he has to go back there. He has to be there. He's sort of duty bound. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, but you're right. Uh, now this movie does a better job than the last few to tell you what powers everybody has. That I think there's a there's a sort of a disconnect here. I think the movies have done a great job of telling you what their powers are. Like they've been pretty consistent about what the powers are. Yeah, yeah. And and when they introduce new things, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see that being a, a a new upgrade thing. Like Spider Man's got the legs now, which are pretty cool. Yeah, and, yeah. That and, actually didn't bother me in yeah, this movie because they were in space, right? And Iron Man's got these new like little hover shooty things or whatever he's got coming yeah. out of whatever the fuck those are. Because <laughs> I think there's a point where uh, somebody turns to him, and uh, I think it's Banner turns to him, and it's like, oh, so so new stuff to the to the suit, huh? And you're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever. What was the band? <laughs> but like, um, they've done a great job of because I going through all the movies again. It's like, yeah, they've they, they're pretty consistent with the powers. They're not consistent with who can do what to whom, though. Right. Mm. And, the, the strength of those powers. Right. And like you said, this is one of those things where you could just have a, a field day because there's so many characters of why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do this? Because there's so many things that they can do and they have shown they can do throughout the whole thing and yes again it's one of those things where the movie necessarily has to make you forget that they can do those things still uh you know you're you're, like you were like if i'm dr strange here's how i would (laughs) do it you know and And like like, he's better than i am so why is he doing it this way (laughs) and then i I get how quill ends up on that planet but you know they make i mean after they destroyed uh ego Mm -hmm. in the second movie my understanding was he kind of lost his god power Mm -hmm. therefore quill is essentially it probably not even as good as black widow because at least she you know she's got training and you know i mean he's just basically like just this you know mercenary that just right. goes and you know steals shit he's, or whatever he's got the advantage so, like of, how does he live yeah he's got the advantage of having a thing that flies around and a yeah. mask well yeah. and <laughs> the disconnect for me on the powers specifically is keyed on that scene where the the two thanos henchmen come after scarlet witch and vision uh-huh. in like berlin or whatever yeah. and that granted they, they hurt vision mm-hmm. and he says something about i can't phase or whatever so maybe he's useless at this point scarlet witch is still in my opinion from the other movies like a god basically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they have to be saved by black widow and falcon <laughs> and captain, and captain america, america. Yeah. Which, i mean captain america obviously captain america is, makes sense yeah. falcon but at i've least... seen people here's the problem i've seen people online big marvel fans comic fans yeah, yeah. 
who are bitching about that moment where Cap stops Thanos' arm. Mm -hmm. Because Spider-Man should be ten times stronger than Cap. And -and so-and-so should be such-and-such. And 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 doesn't have a shield. But I'm saying the comics do a great job of telling you who's stronger than who. Yeah. The movies don't give a shit because they either expect you to know from the comics or they need to change it every other Well, they change everything from the comics, so that doesn't even help. Yeah, and if if Hulk can pretty much beat Thor in a fight that we've seen a couple of times now... Uh, then why is, why is, and, and then Hulk gets his ass beat by Thanos. We're doing a lot of transitive property here. Uh-huh. Sure. But like, uh, if Hulk beats Thanos, uh, I mean, Thanos beats Hulk so bad, so badly, then how is Captain America able to stop Thanos? Yeah. No. And how is, how is Tony's suit able to stop Thanos at um, one point? I'm with, again, the, the response is going to be, you're thinking too much. <laughs> but, Just enjoy your Sure. And there's, and there's still, I mean, I think they did a, as good a job as they could with there being this many characters in the movie, but you still have to look at it. And there are people that get kind of sidelined. I mean, Captain America basically gets sidelined. Groot is pretty worthless in this whole movie. He has that one funny line. Oh, he's a teenager. He and makes yeah, the he hammer. uses his hand yeah. to make the <laughs> thing. But that's why I made <laughs> the joke okay. about Vin Diesel regretting like, that role Groot. because he's shoved to the side. But Groot is. I mean, Groot's on the side in most of the in the last Guardian of the Galaxy movie. Too. I mean, I. I mean, you would expect Groot to not have as many big moments, but like Captain America does nothing other than i guess he helps in the fight in wakanda obviously but i mean up until that point yeah you've barely even seen him and black panther adds very little oh. other than he gives them wakanda to fight on yeah but he adds so little this might be my biggest problem with the action in this movie by the way is black panther um the, now the the uh, all the other stuff that we're talking about is just kind of that's just kind of fun yeah re, you know whatever we're looking back on it and like yeah why don't they blah 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 the Black Panther thing, though, he there's a the, the, in in Black Panther we see that his suit can build up all this kinetic energy yeah. and like blow up all this stuff around him, and mm-hmm. it never used once yep. no. in this one. Mm-hmm. There is a point where he does have that you can see that kinetic energy building, and Thanos slams him on the ground, and you kind of see a little bit of a whoop or whatever, but it's not anything like what we saw in the actual Black Panther movie. And I was like, that would have been really useful. And I feel <laughs> yeah. like, I feel like that's, there's a lot of stuff I thought. Well, I, I feel like that was probably one of my bit, my biggest, not a nitpick, but you, it's a problem. No, I agree. Yeah. But I did get, you, you talked about that moon with Thanos. That's why we go to movies. That mm. moment where Cap and Panther race away from the whole pack oh, that was because great. they're so much faster yeah. <laughs> gave me chills yeah, yeah, like, yeah. that's what the reason i go to superhero movies <laughs> and this movie has a lot of beats like that mm-hmm. you're gonna enjoy it if you enjoyed previous marvel movies if you if you like me watch civil war and you're like okay i didn't hate it it's okay it's there i probably don't need to rewatch it a bunch that, you're gonna feel the same way coming out of this movie i mm-hmm. will say this kind of um i mean i've never been like oh i don't want to go see a marvel movie i mean i always check them out obviously but um i definitely haven't been as like invested other than maybe spider-man just because i'm such a spider-man guy but uh this actually rejuvenated my interest a little like i'm more interested in going to see ant-man now than i was before well i'll be curious to, yeah like, I'm they just have curious what to they're be, gonna do this has to be set before I'm, infinity war or, it would have to be, yeah it has to or be, right? like your idea yeah it's happening that, at the uh, same time having seen infinity war i don't think it's possible for them to do my idea you know what i'm very excited maybe about this Marvel, both captain Marvel. maybe <laughs> both is happening at the same time <laughs> <laughs> i'm very excited about uh miss marvel or what is it miss what is it captain, captain, Mar- captain, captain marvel. marvel good gosh <laughs> which was uh, the uh the the sort the end miss credit marvel, scene. The... captain marvel yeah the uh, very end credit scene was yeah, the yeah. well and that's symbol. the thing that we're kind of forgetting in all this is that yeah thanos will probably regret having killed gamora yeah time travel will be involved somehow but captain marvel is going to be a key to avengers 4 uh, otherwise why did he why did yeah and i think Nick fury uh, yeah. call her I, well, and I think i think fury i think jackson's in the captain marvel movie he is sans eye patch i believe yeah he is uh so that'll be colson's in that movie well and that was another thing i couldn't remember which you've rewatched all the movies mm-hmm. recently um and i never watched like agents of shield really or anything but was it really widely known that Fury was back? I was trying to remember because I mean Colson's uh, not Colson, um, Colby Smolder's character, uh, Maria. Yeah, Maria Hill. Maria Hill's with him at the end. Well, he the like singer. surprise shows up with a helicarrier at the end of Age of Ultron. Was it Age of Ultron? Okay, okay. Well, mm, okay. So the last time we saw him was at the end of Winter Soldier, um, because he um, t- says. Uh, the, we're uh, we're going to attack this Hydra base. This is what Avengers: Age of Ultron starts off with, and everything. Yes, he does show up with a helicar- helicarrier. I think in Age of Ultron. You're right. Okay. That might be the last time we see him. Okay. And then 
I, I, I've taken that in credit scene to mean that they've been, they've rebuilt shield underground mm. from those, the events of those movies. He hasn't been in the movies since then. And there's probably something on that show that they've been doing, but I don't care. Enough well, that's to find the, out. the Coulson character dies in the first Avengers. Yeah. But then I think he shows up in Agents of Shield. He's, he's the main he's character. Uh, yeah. yeah. If I remember, I did watch most of the first season. If I remember correctly, he's he's basically a clone of some sort. Oh, a clone. Uh, so I, but but don't like. I mean, all these comic book people are going to come at me. <laughs> you know Agents what? Maybe you fans. should call me Landfill. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't watch the fucking show. It's stupid. I mean, I just couldn't get into it. <laughs> yeah, that would work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, oh man but, uh, <laughs> we worked a beer fest reference I know. <laughs> we totally did okay so uh letter grades is going around uh, i'm gonna give it a b plus a minus right okay. in that that we lost oh, so but i do want to see it quite it a bit oh yeah i don't know b minus mm-hmm. mm-hmm. okay i'm s- i don't know well i guess an a minus isn't really solid i'm gonna do an a minus mm-hmm. for now i think it i think on multiple viewings though i i think it could easily go up to that a territory yeah solid a for me um uh, i do have obviously some some issues with it uh i i mean i don't know how in the world you make a movie like this i, I don't know. either that's like i said that alone makes it's one it of those good. things that where then, like you're you know. judging uh you know you're judging an ice skating competition and you're like the level of difficulty <laughs> was fucking high yeah. for this yeah. and they pretty much nailed it and it's way better than the guy who did just a couple of triple axles and skated nope. around the you know skated around the rink the rest of the time <laughs> i do i do want to make a prediction so we can come back in a year and be like yeah you were fucking right no i do, i know jeremy said they're all going to survive i do think they're going to kill iron man or captain america no i do i no i think uh, to expound on my theory yeah. i think i told sims this you tipped your hand that all spider-man and black panther and those they're not dead permanently they're coming back i think you've also tipped your hand that iron man and cap are dead mm. i think well i don't know if they'll kill both of them i'm i i would go i would lean towards iron man but the problem is they already did the whole like stabbing him through the chest and he well did again, silly puttied himself back my together. real world knowledge trumps your in movie knowledge and the, robert Downey jr cannot be afforded for too much longer oh and no no no! i don't think chris evans has publicly movies. talked about being ready to be done with the character true story i don't think they're going to end those two character arcs in the mcu and leave them just out there they're going to kill those fuckers. Yeah, and then they'll bring back, like, younger Iron Man. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. If you're oh, saying oh. goodbye to Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man and Tony Stark, you are not doing oh, gonna it give him Paul a... Walker style. Also, where and, uh, he just went off to have a baby and yes. live his life, and we call him every other I did want to say yes. Cheadle is great in this movie. You know, Cheadle is, yes. That, that was the most they've ever given him, really, to do. It is, and it just points out how worthless he is as a character. <laughs> <laughs> but he is very good. No. I do I do wonder, though, if they if they do end up, if they do end up getting even either getting rid of Downey or the character of Iron Man or Captain America and Chris Evans, how that will affect them at all. Uh, I wonder about that because their main like cash cows have been Thor, Captain America well, and Iron Man. Yep. And I think X-Men are, I mean, I don't know this, but obviously Disney's purchasing Fox. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely think the X-Men are going to factor into all this. In fact, there's even rumors that that Jean Grey movie, is somehow going to be an idea of what they're mm. going for. There's no way they're spending any time and money but right that could now be a future. on any of that. Like if yeah. anybody who has, if anybody has a theory that Avengers Four is going to include X Men, oh or no, Fantastic no, I don't think Four, that. I don't think that. What I'm saying is, after that, assuming the merger aside, goes through, assuming a merger goes through, moving forward, they would have stuff like that to mess with if they didn't have anything Iron goes. Man. I just, if they I didn't have Iron Man. They anymore. obviously. Uh, the, as they showed in this movie, you had a ton of characters and probably five or six of them didn't get much to do. You can't add the X-Men and Fantastic no, no, no. Four into this movie. If it came across, I was saying that. No, I didn't think that. No, I didn't think that. I'm just telling yeah. the MCU that they're, yeah, yeah. they're not going to do that. Even no. if they have a connected universe, they're going to begin telling seasons of storylines for the X-Men and the mm-hmm. Fantastic. Where they're not going to consist- consistently put everybody in every movie. But if they did decide to get rid of Iron Man and Captain America, they've got plenty of stories to derive from. I still think the they comics. can use... And the- they, can have a, they can have the female Captain America. I mean, there's all kinds Why of stuff Why can't they, they can use do. the Doctor Strange? When Doctor Strange came out, I was convinced this is how they're going to reboot these characters. They're mm-hmm. going to go back in time, find a younger actor oh, yeah, to play Tony yeah. Stark... And just do his thing yeah, again. Yeah, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's anything preventing them from doing that still. Yeah, even. just like right. you did with Star Trek, right? Yeah, they mm-hmm. had new Avengers because it was a new timeline. So Tony's and, life will be new now. And I'm really mm-hmm. curious if those would actually. I mean, we're just projecting stuff here, but I'm really curious how well those movies would do. I think 
That, that's that'd be really interesting to see how far people will follow marvel but you know i mean i could also be selling it short a little bit we're, we're so used to downey and we're so used to evans and all those i mean i, I don't think anybody was really thinking of downey in the iron man suit no. to 10 years ago no and so there's probably somebody else out there. I don't think anyone they... was thinking an Iron Man movie would be made. Yeah, that's well, true. Well, the big rumor was that, that Tom Cruise got pretty close to getting the role. Oh, really? And he gave, I saw an interview a couple of days ago. He's pr- starting to promote Mission Impossible, and they asked him about it, and they were like, how close did you get? He's not not close, not very close. Yeah. But Robert Downey Jr. Well, is great in the role. Talk but... about not <laughs> being affordable. Well, yeah, exactly. You start out not affordable. <laughs> yeah. right? And, you all, and you know, like everybody talks about how they can't picture Wolverine with anybody but Jackman. But then it's like, you know, I don't, you know, I mean, for us, like, we could couldn't picture batman without michael keaton we couldn't picture we i just thought, well, and we didn't know who yeah, exactly. J- jackman was and i just assumed toby mcguire would be playing spider-man for five or and six also, wasn't tom cruise rumored for wolverine too yes i'm pretty sure <laughs> well, I, know, I know um who, who had that role it was uh the villain in mission impossible 2 because that's why he didn't do wolverine oh that's the uh, great scott? scott yeah, yeah great scott he had the role but then mission impossible 2 either they had to do reshoots or it was just going to go into and he had already committed and that's so when they wouldn't let him do wolverine so then it went to jackman so Crazy. like the that's like one of those like legendary stories <laughs> it's, it's, great, like it's like Selick with indiana jones i mean it's on that level really because look how many wolverine movies man i bad. would love to see wolverine try and take on thanos what's thanos gonna do to him yeah <laughs> can't kill him might, 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 well you might be able to tear the uh the exoskeleton in half man or turn him into a piece of ikea furniture <laughs> 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 I didn't watch The Leftovers. Did you guys watch The Leftovers? I watched a part uh, about half the first I've season. I've heard a decent amount of people say the ending of this movie is very Leftovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I and I guess I think there's an actor that was in The Leftovers. It's oh, actually yeah? in the movie. Oh, yeah. wow. Not the same character, obviously. Well, and I've heard that and Left Behind. Oh, and then Arrested Development. I did you hear? Did you read about this? Mm-mm. Oh yeah. They're, they 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 did the thing with Arrested Development. Apparently, like, was there? I didn't watch Arrested Development. Was there an episode where David Cross was like Blue Man or yeah. something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Apparently, in uh, the collection collectors wherever the collector uh, is there's a there's a person behind him at one point it's not david cross i don't yeah, think but it's but a, it's the, the character get-up. that was the 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 whole thing with him was that every time he showed up he would say i blew myself yes yeah but that's apparently why they actually thanked they they said you know an arrested development character yeah well, I, those I guys the, the russos directed several episodes of arrested yeah 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 that's I did sort of that, the connection yeah, yeah. Mm. by the way one other thing before we uh uh sign off but uh you know, it's kind of. It would have been kind of fun though to see Tobey Maguire Spider Man because we would have had a Robert Downey Jr. Tobey Maguire moment oh, again. Yeah. Oh Wonder Boys, Tropic oh, Thunder yeah. action Very going nice. on oh, in there. Yeah. And if you had gotten Hank Pym from Ant Man, yeah, oh, be really snap. something. Yeah, you could do a Wonder Boys. You could. Mm-hmm. Damn it! Wait, now I got to uh, go watch Wonder Boys again. Yeah, yeah. I always think I'm. Gonna, I thought I was because every time I listen to you guys every week, uh, I just I always like and all of a sudden I want to rewatch like ten movies because mm-hmm. you guys talk about them and such. And now I thought I was escaping this one, but then you got to bring a fucking Wonder Boys. Well, I don't yeah. know about you, but I got to get to Thor two as fast as possible. <laughs> After this, podcast, I'm still not really I'm dying that. to watch the Dark World. I know again. you are because I, I really sold it, didn't I? Yeah. Um, anyway, Chris's uh, favorite Marvel movie, Thor: The Dark World. Yeah. If yeah. you learn any, if you learn nothing else from this podcast, it's that Chris's favorite MCU film is That's Thor: right. The Dark World. Just, just put that on our our, uh, our whatever the masthead. Um, <laughs> All right, well, I guess uh, if you're like Barrett and Jeremy, then you pretty much know what to expect from this movie, and you like them. You don't Mm -hmm. need to go see it or anything, because it's... You know, it's there. It's a good movie. It's a yeah. decent movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Um, I would say you guys would say go see it on a big screen, though, Oh, right? sure, yeah. absolutely. Um, it was fun. And uh, if you're like Jonathan and uh, me, you're then right. you just go right on in. Hey, everybody's <laughs> already seen this movie anyway. By yeah, the time probably. At least once. You pretty much have to if you don't want it spoiled for you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so you had the snap uh, spoiled for you, then? Yeah. Um, among other things, yeah. Oh yeah. Although, and the snap was something I sort of like half predicted. Is that, that what you were you were yes, teasing? Before, that's right? what I was teasing. But what I thought they were going to do, and at least right now, I wish they would have done, was when he snapped, it would be the old guard that died, mm-hmm. and we'd be left with Spider Man, Black Panther to reform the Avengers mm-hmm. for Avengers Four to kick off the new crew. But they didn't do that. 
Yep. They Total kill all the new people. <laughs> doesn't feel real. And how? What, what is? Is it? I mean, is it? I guess it's just. Uh, it's just luck of the draw. The whatever this force is, yeah, it just chooses well, I, whoever it wants to. So that's the kind of thing that I feel like if I ask those questions, the internet's going to stone me. Well, they, well I, I, I'm really curious because, because it I said mean, half like, of all life, but I didn't I mean, see any trees. If disappear. you're doing like, say, oh, if true. you're doing like yeah. 2012, where <laughs> you're 2012, but, where you're like keeping the smart people and stuff, why would you get rid of <laughs> Spider Man? But I mean, that dude is a genius. I mean, it, when he says life, it's I think it's pretty clear he doesn't mean trees I, I agree but i'm just saying and, and then the next thing is is that he does say that when he's on his plant when he's on titan that he he came up with this idea and it would it would end it would end poor and rich and it would not uh, it would not yeah pay. it was like random right yeah it was random it was, it was random so okay. i mean he does say that it, it is established or whatever but yeah cool. you're right why does it pick those people in spe- specific eh, it's random yeah. there you go yeah um but uh yeah what i guess that's gonna be the end of this one we just uh, we just reviewed that shit that was a, <laughs> that was basically a maxi pod of a mini pod more like in shittity war more Maybe, like not was, not the dark world that's for all you people who are like forwarding all the way to yeah. the end you know <laughs> i gave that shit a d that's right so can i come on and do the adrift mini pod yes okay, uh, for sure you'll really? be in here by yourself why not for sure you know why? did they show that preview before i saw then? Preview. Yeah. Oh, I you saw my, before too I to Jason oh my said, god it's, it's white life of pie uh, that'll be into this mini pod mini pod infinity pod yes uh this is chris atkins and jeremy scott barrett sharon jonathan watkins we'll see you next time Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. I don't know what it is about. um, (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, I don't know where to go with that. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Outtakes is where we'll go with that. Because right? uh, he, he brings in what he considers the uh, the octo, his octo whatever. I can't remember what he calls oh, it. Yeah, I don't either. They're all companies that are going to use his new internet. And one of them is, uh, is, a, is a gay dating site, but it's Christian. Oh. And uh and the uh and the guy and the guy tells Thomas Middleditch that he's he's Christian and he, Middleditch doesn't think there's any sort of connotations with that. So he just goes out and just blurts that out at a meeting mm-hmm. with all the other ones. And apparently being labeled as Christian is horrible in Silicon Valley. <laughs> so they tr- start treating him like What is uh TJ Miller says something about that early on when he uh, catches uh uh amanda shaw smoking he's like you smoking in the the valley is like as vilified as i think it's like being a christian oh yeah, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah. like a line he said yeah <laughs> it's almost definite that he's gone like forever right tj miller yeah oh he's not coming back now yeah yeah not that's... after the subway he might go to jail yeah for that whole thing like he called in a fake like bomb mm-hmm. threat mm-hmm because he got drunk and had a fight with someone. God, man. They're not going to hire him back he's, on that show He's now. in free fall. It's crazy. It was crazy he's to hear his voice. He got Deadpool 2. No kidding. And well, Ready already, Player One, But he too. already did Deadpool 2. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess he had already wrapped by the time. Do you think we were supposed to see yeah. him in Dead, uh, not Deadpool 2? Do you think we were supposed to see him in Ready Player One and his shit got cut? He's in there. He's in Ready Player One. You don't actually see him, though. His voice is in there. Right. Yeah. No, I don't oh, know. Do you think that they were going to put him in there instead of the I'm just curious. CGI I don't know. I character? I don't think so. Was that character in the book? Yeah, apparently he's in it for like a paragraph, but they made him bigger in the movie. He's just doing his TJ <clears throat> Miller shit though. He I really didn't realize is. how one note he is. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, but yeah. it's it's a Wouldn't funny it note. It'd be funny if Deadpool 2 somehow came out and every scene that's supposed to have him in it has dude man in it. Christopher Mo- Plummer? <laughs> Christopher oh, Plum. that would be badass. <laughs> and you don't you don't even address it. Like you just play it as straight. That is a very Deadpool joke. That would to be make. the Deadpooliest joke yes, ever. Yes, it would. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh god. And Can I you can... just see him like insulting like I would just love that if they could just cut to Christopher Plummer yeah. like making riffing on jokes about how bad like his skin looks. What, what would be hilarious is if it just caught cut to him like in his living room by a fire. 
Like, obviously, they just didn't even bother to bring him on set. <laughs> <laughs> they just cut to him, like, yeah. smoking a pipe and delivering T.J. Miller's lines. <laughs> Trying to do a very bad T.J. Miller impersonation. <laughs> you know, I have a connection to Romeo and Juliet. That, uh, it's just a rabbit hole, but I'll share it anyway. I was watching a shitty Hallmark movie yesterday, because mm-hmm. you know how I like to do that. Mm-hmm. And the pe- premise was basically this family hired a nanny, and um, she was trouble. I'll tell you what, this nanny is trouble. Mm-hmm. And she lo- the girl, Shocking. The girl looks like 14, mm-hmm. but there's a whole scene where she discovers that the mom has a nanny cam, mm-hmm. and then she knows the dad is watching it while the mom is gone, and she fucking strips in front of him. Mm. Oh. And like in the movie, you see her from behind. But I was like, man, I thought she was like 12. Anyway, so I was like, who the fuck is this girl? Because she's acting all sexy and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I was f- was feeling uncomfortable. So I IMDb'd her, and she's Olivia Hussey's daughter. Oh, shit, really? And From- she was born in like 93. Whoa. Wow. And I, so Olivia Hussey had her when she was, I looked it up. She was like 43 years old when she had bir- gave birth to this kid. That's crazy. Now, she she was Juliet in... in- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she was nude in that movie, right? When she was underage, right? Correct. But it's it's that kind of nude though, where they do the like the hair covers Mm. it and all that, you know? Like, oh, she's not really nude; she's got hair covering her, so it's all good. (laughs) We watched that movie in school, and like, I I did too. And they fast forward. Yeah. (laughs) Have you seen that ladies' razor commercial where the girls all have bonsai bushes in front of their genitals? Like that is the most uncomfortable commercial (laughs) I've ever seen. I can't even believe they get away with that shit. Because it, like, not only are they just barely covering genitals with a, it's like Austin Powers, yeah. the bush in front, but then they're actually shaving the bush yeah. with the razor. <laughs> it's just really uncomfortable. All right, everybody. Oh, gosh. That sucked. <laughs> you got to get warmed I up. Was like, I, was like, I'm, I was like, I was like, I'm not ready for this, but I'm going to go for it anyway. You're like that albino in Princess Bride. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You're in the pit of the- <laughs> uh, Yeah. Yeah.